What's up y'all? Solo. Got another honeybee update for y'all. It is July right now, early July. And I found my first small hive beetle larva crawling around. Now I had some fears that I had an infestation of hive beetles, but until yesterday I, I didn't actually see the larva crawling around. So I realized I missed one crucial step to building the bee site and that is applying herbicide. No, we're not going to use Agent Orange or anything crazy like that. We're going to use some vinegar and salt. And what this will do is when the hive beetle larva goes through its life cycle and it drops back down in the ground, it's going to realize it can't reproduce in that ground because it's filled with salt and vinegar. And hopefully this will stop the cycle and I'll be able to clean out the hives and stop them from returning so quickly, if at all. So what we're going to do, is we're going to take this pressure, uh, this pump uh, sprayer. So it's clean. I cleaned it out previously. And we're going to put some salt in and some vinegar. I'm going to go get my measuring cup. Now I watched some videos on how to mix this and they go for one to one ratio, just like my sugar water. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, mm, I'd say at least 10 or 20 cups, or um, since each one of these are two cups, you know, half of that, and then that amount of salt in it as well. I'm not sure how much I can put in here cups wise. It's all in gallons. So we're kind of kind of have to see how much vinegar we can put in and then we'll know how much salt we put in. Alright, two cups. Four cups, because every one of these cups is two cups. Six cups. Eight cups. This one's empty. Let's start with this next one. The label fell off this bottle. <laughs> That's vinegar. Ten cups. Twelve. Fourteen. Sixteen. Let's go for twenty. Eighteen. Alright, that's twenty. So now we need twenty cups of salt. Oh man, we might need more salt than what I got. I can hear more in there, it's just stuck. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have 20 cups of this. I need to go see how much more I have in my storage. I might need to might need to pour some of that back in.
All right, we just have two more of these. Well, this is gonna be fun pouring it back in. Oh, that's smart. I already poured it in here. Now I'll have another cup to pour it out with. It's okay. Let's just use as much salt as I got. Alright, so that's two cups. Four cups. Six cups. So we might be just doing a, a two to one ratio in this case. Hopefully that's fine. Alright, I think I had six, right? I already forgot. <laughs> six. Oh, that's all of it. Well, hopefully this will be a good start. Alright, doing some quick Googling, it shows that Epsom salt will be effective. So, let's go ahead and add that. I think we're up to, what, 10 cups? I don't know, maybe y'all been paying closer attention. I kind of forgot already. So, let's go ahead and add this. It should be 12, if that was the case. kind of chunky right now. So that's like 14 or 15 maybe. So we're a little under the 20, the one to one. So it's like 15 cups of salt for 20 cups of uh, vinegar. It, I think it's gonna be close enough. I'm just pouring it in to kind of rinse it out. Not even a cup's worth of vinegar. All right, and uh, now we shake it up. Oh, it smells like vinegar. It smells like vinegar for sure. this stuff back.
All right, so what's next is I'm gonna put my bee suit on, gonna get my tools together. We're gonna spray this down and take a preliminary look at the hive beetle infested hive. It's that weak hive that I did the split on. And I'm um, just kind of keep my fingers crossed it's not too bad. I don't want to lose this, this one too, you know? And I definitely don't want to lose my strong one. Hey there, Bumblebee. This is not sugar water, my friend. So, yeah, let's just kind of keep your fingers crossed it's not too bad. And let's hope this kind of um, breaks the cycle. And, you know, hopefully the, the strong hive will never be affected. All right, give me a few minutes to get my camera all set up. put my bee suit on and I want to point out how many bees get get attracted to me as soon as I put it on just watch this it's like they know who I am already but they know what the bee suit means hey buddy <laughs> You see him, I think he's off camera right now, but in the moment when I put my bee suit on front of y'all, y'all will see. Oh buddy, you need to go. He's one just landed on me. Alright, let's put my bee suit on. Sporting my hive shirt, y'all. This is my work shirt. I have a bunch of hive shirts that are not work shirts. They're much cleaner than this. But this is one of my work shirts. You know, when I attend some kind of hive meetup, I'll wear my knife shirt. Y'all see? Y'all see the bees? One already cleaned in my bee suit. Now I need to be careful when I put my veil on. I don't enclose one of these curious bees in my suit with me. Hasn't happened yet. But I kind of just dust off my head there. And then I uh, throw my veil over before they get a chance. I see you, buddy. I see you. So we are going to be opening the hive today. And, uh, I just will make sure I want to button up real good. Because <clears throat> when you open that hive, the bees take it personal. Alright, next we're going to put on my shoes. Usually I lean up against the car for the video's sake. I want to do it up against the house here. You see him? Yeah, buddy. I'm putting on my clothes, my de-socializing clothes. I don't dare go near the hive without it. Alright. All we need are gloves now. I think that's one of the most heartwarming parts about being a beekeeper is how they notice you way before you get to the hive. As soon as we pull our car up, they're right outside the window sometimes. Not the whole hive, not like 10,000 of them. That, that'd be terrifying. Maybe like 10 of them. Not many at all. And they just kind of stick around with you. They, just, they follow me around the property. I had to guess they're probably scout bees doing their scout job by scouting me out before I approach the hive. I wonder if the hive knows I'm there before I even walk down. <laughs> hey buddy. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. <laughs> He's trying to lick uh, sugar off. I can see his little Mouthpiece is moving and all. He's not stinging nothing.
<laughs> I probably drip sugar water down in my gauntlets. Yeah, he's trying to lick it all up right now. So I'm just going to pull my gauntlet up. There he goes. He's done. And um, I got to tuck this gauntlet in because uh, the fabric's separating. You know, I got new gloves. I just haven't put them on yet. I hope I don't regret saying that today. <laughs> Think about putting my hat on, but it is so hot. Let's see, make sure my nose doesn't touch. Come on, y'all. Could the bees ask for a better home than this? There are hundreds of acres in either direction with absolutely no development. These bees are in Wonderland. Now, if I can keep their predators at bay, Maybe they'll actually survive, hence the hive beetles. But uh, that's why we're here today. Holy crap. Busy, busy. All right. Got my sprayer here. I have not pumped this thing. I hope the salt is dissolved enough to uh, not clog it. Well, that would make this job a little harder. But I've been shaking it. I left it for about 30 minutes. Now I'm shaking it some more. Hopefully that is acceptable. So first, I'm gonna pull up some plants that are coming up. There's some uh, gardening around the beehives because these will become bridges for insects to climb up. Y'all see that mushroom there? Y'all see that mushroom? Look at that. This thing was growing right under my beehives. You see that okay? I have no idea what kind it is, but it's really cool just to see it growing under my beehives. So I want to point something out before we even start here. The weak hive over there, I think has a, a small hive beetle problem. Because I saw larva crawling around while I was feeding them. That's why we're going to spray salt all around the perimeter of this hive. Because part of the life cycle of these beetles are the larva will drop to the ground at night, burrow in the ground, become a mature hive beetle, return to the hive, and lay tens of thousands of beetle eggs. We don't want that. So by spraying this area down below with a, a natural chemical, just being salt, two kinds of salt. So you have sodium chloride and you have magnesium salt. And you're also gonna have the vinegar, which it's all uh, in as a carrier oil. And hopefully that will be enough to uh, make whatever the larva drops down into not a uh, good environment to uh, respawn. So yes, we're gonna open this up in a bit. It might be a nightmare, but if I clean out good now and I don't make it really easy for them to then repopulate by spraying around, hopefully that's the last time we see them, right? There's literally a bee on my camera right now. That's okay. 
So, without further ado, um, I'm going to shake this up. Oh, yes, I wanted to show you a view. So, as a sign of the hive beetles, because of the hive beetles, there is honey oozing out of the opening. And bumblebees have taken the opportunity to try to clean it up. And you see all those bumblebees there. Now they are blocking the entrance and being quite the nuisance. So uh, hopefully uh, once we deal with this uh, hive beetle problem, uh, they're not going to be hanging around the opening. So I don't, don't like seeing bumblebees showing up around my honeybees. And there's a fly too. Yuck. I guess it's good I had the entrance reducer on. Maybe I'm slowing them down, getting in as much, but this hive don't need it. This hive might be swarming soon. <laughs> My strong hive is strong. My weak hive, very weak. Very weak. So weak it needs a lot of my help right now. All right, we're gonna pump it. working. Now if any big old salt crystals get stuck it might stop working. Oh yeah. Smell. Is that it? Is it stuck? <laughs> Are we done already? We got five seconds of that and now it's stuck. Freaking solid, damn it. Oh. Well, maybe this will work. You don't have to get on every inch. The rain's going to do that for me. When this gets soaked down on the ground, it's going to disperse it. So it doesn't have to be super fine, I guess. I hope this helps. Something that's all new to me, you know? Sprayed a bumblebee. You deserve it. I think we're going to have enough. I'm gonna have to buy a lot more salt. I'm gonna soon enough be the, the bringer of salt, not the bringer of sugar water. I'm gonna try to bias it toward the weak hive, just to make sure I'm not spraying enough. At least this one gets closer to enough than the strong one that probably doesn't need it as much. I mean, I do need to open the hive and really make sure, but just by the looks of the front of it, I see absolutely no interlopers.
So we're just trying to do it all 360 degrees around the hives. Because that's where the larva is going to come out at night and try to burrow down in. And uh, it tastes like shit. They're not going to go for it. They'll just die. Or maybe it burns their carcass. I don't know. Carcass? Caracas? Well, this isn't easy. I'm kind of pulling down my bee suit. I'm you know, swapping things up the hill, opening hives, carrying heavy honey supers. Trying to get it everywhere. You know, and this is not the only time I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to probably do this uh, whenever I feed my bees sugar water. But eventually, even the plants around here are gonna die, and then I won't have to pull them up no more. I'm trying to get real good right by the opening of the weak hive where I would think those larvae are going to drop out at night. Beacon fog, my friend. I already took the big nozzle off. You should be fine. change angles here. Gotta make sure I get it between those cinder blocks too. I can't give them any refuge. Because all it takes is one or two of them in a weak hive. And they're gonna be back in thousands, if not tens of thousands. 
And if it gets too bad, the whole hive's gonna abscond. It means that they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave the hive, all of the bees. We don't want that now. It's really smelly vinegar now. Hi beetles, I declare war. This thing is almost empty. I might just have to pour out the rest. But I'm going to put it around the base of the table because I'm also about to do some work right now on the table. And if any of the larvae crawl out, I want to make sure uh, no matter where they go, they're going to die. Pushing air. Right. Let the pressure out, and I'm going to open this thing. There's probably a little bit left at the bottom. Oof, very salty. The exact opposite of what my bees want. Okay, Alright, I'm gonna put this all back together and um, let's open up the weak hive and I'll show y'all exactly what I'm dealing with here. Putting this nozzle on is not fun with my gloves on, I'll tell you what. You gonna work with me, buddy? Okay, I, I can't blow through this. <laughs> there we go. No. I want to take my gloves off, but you know... A little nervous to be uh, unprotected down here, you know. All right, I'm gonna have to deal with you later. You just go in the miscellaneous bee box, which is good because that's what we need next anyway. Yay! All right, so we're gonna open up the weak hive right now. Um, what I'd like to do today is kind of get an, an idea of the extent of its damage. There's a bee on my arm. I want to get the extent of the damage, and then you want to land too. So, I want to get the extent of the damage in, in the box here. Since we've already sprayed this area, um, maybe that would be good enough, but I want to give like every fighting chance. So I brought a CD jewel case, like what you'd hold an old CD in, and uh, that's going to be a, a beetle bait in a few minutes. And I'll show you all what I'm talking about. But let's kind of just get an, an idea of the damage here and uh, carry on accordingly. Let me put this up the hill, we're down with this. Just need it off the table. I need probably need all the space I can right now. So I'm gonna have to get my hive grabbers, my hive tool. 
and uh, for the moment we're just going to start with that and kind of take it apart piece by piece. Hopefully if there are bees inside they're not too angry. Oh, I see high beetles. See one crawling around in the lid here. Well, now he's a dead high beetle. But there's another one I think. So that's kind of how you do it. You just crush them as you see them. And uh, then you just make a toxic environment that they can't thrive in. Now, I'm going to remove the super now. And they're probably going to start coming out. If there's any left. Did they drink the sugar water I left for them? No. There's those damn worms in there too. Just pour it out. I don't want that. Hopefully you can see them crawling in there. There's one. There's one. So uh, they're becoming a problem. I think I got those ones. All right, I see another hive beetle. Oh, they're mating. <laughs> Sorry to break up your sex party, buddy. But now you broke that. So, that ain't good, right? Mating beetles, that means they're laying larva. Now I'm gonna lay these boxes out. They don't like sunlight. So if I can put them out in the open, there's a good chance a lot of them are gonna run away. All right, it's blue, but not very strongly. Oh no, yep. Oh, it's all over the lid. That ain't good, yo. And it's uh, tons of bumblebees. Wouldn't expect that. So we're going to just kind of scrub them off the best we can. You know, we're, we're not going to get rid of them today. But, you know, we can at least reduce their numbers. Get off there, bumblebee. And since I already covered this area in vinegar and salt, hopefully they won't be able just to lay. But they might not be of recent charity anyway. So, whatever. But, you know, if I can kind of help the hive this way, do some manual cleaning. Man, there's even a fly in my hive. That's nasty. That weak hive, you, I'm telling you, they're, they don't, they're having trouble housekeeping. And like almost none of them have come out. I'm curious to, to dig down in there and see what's going on. So I do, I do at a preliminary look in my um, in my beetle blasters, which are these little uh, they're called mechanical traps, where uh, beetles and um, larvae can fall down in, and then they drown in oil or DE, whatever your choice is. You know, I'm going to clean all of these off, but there's going to be more down in there. So, let's just carry on. Having them out in the sunlight like this uh, will hopefully drive them away. All right, I'm scared. Honestly, I don't want to know how bad the extent is, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. 
So, um, let's start with the, the empty frames that I know are empty. So, I did a, I moved these, uh, I did a split a few months ago from this super strong hive over to this weaker hive. And when I did that, I put some empty frames in here. So, I really want to see what they've actually done with them, if anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. Just covered in small hive beetle larva. I'm going to put this frame aside. I'm going to come back to it. Oh, there's a lot of dead bees in this box. That's never a good sign. Alright, another foundation frame. Empty, but something I noticed they started collecting some of the wax. I think they were definitely getting started. See this side, how it's completely covered in wax? This side's not. They started uh, collecting, I think. Or maybe the beetles did. Who knows? I'm new at this, y'all. Alright, the bees are getting a little angry. I really need to inspect things, guys. Now, there may even be a queen about. They just need to be really mindful of that. Alright, this is a whole bunch of capped honey. And there is a bumblebee at the bottom. <laughs> fucking with it. He's stealing it. There's even a dead bee down there. Which is not good. But this to me, this to me looks like just uh, capped honey and um, cells with a whole bunch of uh, larva in them. I can see the larva crawling through. It may not be very obviously. It's also bleeding right now. I'm going to put this back down in here. I'm going to move on. So, I don't know why I keep picking up like this. I literally have a tool so I don't have to touch honey. <laughs> got excited. I got excited in, in all the bad ways. So, let's, uh, let's pick this up again. So again, we have a lot of uh, capped honey, and I can't not see this side very well. Oh shit, don't drop it. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to put you back because I don't feel like I have a firm grip on it now. Now, how severe is this infestation? I don't know. This is my first hive, but by looking at other videos, so far, it might get worse, but so far this is a mild to moderate infestation by my absolute amateur observations. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to shake. Oh, okay, it's getting worse. There are tons of worms crawling through these, uh, this capped honey. And uh, an observation here, the queen cell on the edge all the way to the right of my handle is not here? Maybe it, it, it hatched? I don't know. I, it might hatch on the other side. It looks like it's open on this other side, but on this side it's all closed off. Alright, this one looks really bad. This one is like totally getting mangled by those hive beetles it looks like. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? It 
it's really bad. Now, my observations here is there is no cap brood, which makes me think this hive may be queenless. Are the queens hiding really well? I don't know. But um, I don't see any new brood being laid. So what, what is recommended in that case? When you have a really strong hive, you can always pull another frame out and pop it right in there. Kind of give it, it's like giving a car a jump start. You know, you hook another strong battery up to it to kind of give it a jolt to get started. Maybe that was a terrible analogy, but um, basically you're moving brood over so it's gonna, they're gonna come alive real soon and hopefully you can then get a queen out of it. But I'm probably just gonna try to treat these. And um, once, once I open this, if I see signs of swarming again, I'll move them right in. But if they're not showing signs of swarming, which they haven't yet, they haven't stopped drinking their sugar water the last I checked. They were drinking it faster than ever, actually. So, um, I, I don't think I should move them in yet, but I think I should definitely clean this tray out. It's absolutely disgusting on the ground. It's filled with those, those larvae. And uh, that will also give me a chance to check these traps because there are uh, those mechanical traps I was telling you all about. We have the ones that they fall into this liquid and we have another one that's baited with a mix of uh, coconut oil and um, boric acid. And uh, they recommend Crisco, I just didn't have any. So we're, we're hopefully they liked the, hopefully they liked the coconut oil. If they didn't, if we open it and we don't find any in there, we, we know we set up bad traps and that's probably why we have an infestation now. Well, and because we have a weak hive. So, let's see here. I got my empty frames over here. I think I got some more here. Oh yeah, this thing is filled with, um, hey, get, get away from my lens. What are you doing, buddy? So there are larvae in there right now, and there are hive beetles. So let's just dump this, uh, out and uh, refill it. Put that aside for the moment. Pull out this frame here that they've done absolutely nothing with. So to me, as I haven't found a queen, it looks like a, a queen has failed to hatch. I don't see any other bees that make me think there's a queen in here. All I see is this mangled comb. Supposedly they hate being exposed to sunlight, so maybe laying them out like this, uh, it's going to really piss them off. I don't know. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll make things worse. I don't really know. But I do need to make space over here, so I'm going to move my camera. Kind of appreciating them but also scorning them. So I'm going to talk you all through my plan here. We're going to lift this top crate off and I'm going to scrub out all this gunk the best I can 
because they're just making a bigger mess and the bees cannot keep up. They, I do not think these things can keep up right now. All right, so I'm gonna put this box over here. Probably be really heavy. And that only leaves the bottom board now. I'll bring the camera in for a closer look. Ew, nastiness. I'm going to scoop that out for sure. There's all over all these dead bees. And the opening is just filled with those creatures. This is nasty. All right, I'm going to get to work. And we're going to check that trap. Oh my god, they've ate, they ate all of it. Well, I probably needed to refill this thing a little sooner, I'm afraid. I'm going to put this off to the side. Let the sunlight work its magic with these disgusting creatures from hell. I know, buddy. I totally broke down your hive. I know. So, we're going to dust them off, but this is really fruitless. They're just going to come back. But, you know, I'm just trying to help because it's going to be less to clean up later. If I clean them up now, like, I don't think the hive's going to recover. I'm to be honest with y'all, it's probably going to stall. And uh, I just need to open this one up soon and see if it's getting ready to swarm and we'll uh, repeat the process. Uh, this time, hopefully with a little better hive beetle defense because obviously my beetle trap it's totally out of bait. I might have made that boric acid strong enough or uh, or maybe it got so hot in the hive um, all the, the coconut oil is solidified. Maybe that's why they say use Crisco. I don't know. Okay, that's a little less gross. It looks like they've been chewing at the opening a little but nowhere as much as these guys were. They were like trying to make the doorway way bigger. All right, let's move on. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna lift it up and then scrub it out with my brush. have a brush that has now been sacrificed for hive beetle larva. I will never use this brush for anything else. Okay, I'm gonna... Man, I should probably just go wash this up the hill to try not to just put a shit ton of them in the ground, you know? Because the ones up the hill, I don't think they're ever gonna... Yeah, they dropped the pile right on the ground. Well, you know my thought is these ones are probably not old enough anyway. So let's just go ahead and put them on the ground. Because the... Holy crap. I think a tree just fell. I think something loud just came crashing down. Hey, they're all over my boots.
So I'm really tempted to kind of call it quits on this hive and just completely break it down and leave these trays out because um, I didn't see a queen. And as for the population of how many bees are in this hive, man, there might be 20 bees. That's not enough. 20 bees is not enough bees. When I kill them, they're like yellow because of all the honey and pollen they eat. At least that's what my brain thinks it is. looking a lot better this thing was crawling in them and had them in the pile you saw Side looks fine. Mm, this front's nasty now. still really gross and I don't really have a rag to wipe down with it's gonna get grosser this is about the best I can do for it let's rebate the traps so like when I picked that up a minute ago there was hardly like 200 larva 300 larva 500 there's like 20 of them now so hopefully Hopefully put them all in the ground like this wasn't a really bad idea. But uh, yeah, when I saw the mature high beetle larvae, they're much bigger. So I don't think those ones are ready to, they're probably just gonna die. My absolute amateur opinion on that. All right, let's try to clean up all the larvae. I'm not gonna rebate this thing. should have oh, an application tool. Also known as a butter knife. And uh, we're gonna take what I made before, which is uh, coconut oil, boric acid, and a little bit of honeycomb. Super toxic to hive beetles. You know, I have a feeling they ate it all and then there was none left and then they just didn't eat it anymore so I yeah I fucked up We just basically take this trap here and uh, we're going to close it up. It might have been a little too much, but I guess we'll see when it's all gone, right? But uh, the bees can't get in here. The slot's too small, uh, but those high beetles can. And they're going to eat this boric acid um, fatty mix that they probably really like. Hopefully they'll eat that and they'll die. 
but it's unlikely. They're probably going to keep eating the honey, I'm afraid. So, I also have a jewel case. You can um, use that as well. And uh, I want to put that one on top. I basically just took a normal CD case here, and I cut the edge off these two sides, so there's just a tiny little door, kind of like on the beetle barns. And we're going to put some more poison in there. So I just put it kind of on the edges so they can still walk in. Look at those loud ass redneck trucks, man. I'm telling you what. So we closed it up and now they can walk in and eat it and then hopefully die. But uh, we need to rebuild this first. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe they'll save themselves. But for right now, we'll just have to put it all back together. All right. Now I should put this away so no bees. I don't want to get to that while I'm distracted. All right, so we're just going to put it back together. I'm not sure if I'm totally on camera. So right now, all these bees in here, these could just be bees robbing. They might not be part of this hive. All right. We have nerf right now. Yes. Oh no, I forgot to put their entrance reducer in. Shit. So this goes on top here, we're going to put them right in the middle, and uh, actually I'm going to refill that other trap here. Oh, got my bull beetle. 
Eagle Blaster. I'm just getting all these worms off the table. Man, I hope I don't find these yucky things on me later. I don't think they can hurt me. But, you know, why, why do I want them on me, right? They're like stuck in like a secret compartment. Don't make a mess. One of the beetle traps has been refilled. I don't like this one, but I think I left the other one up on my car. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refill this. And, man, it's hard walking up the hill, I'll tell you what. In this summertime heat, probably not to do that too much. So I only have one trap I noticed. They actually recommend two in hives. So once again, I am lacking on defenses. But I guess uh, this is the consequence of that, right? I'm gonna go up the hill. I wanna put a second blaster in there. I'll be right back. First, let's make sure it's not in here. Nope, it is at the top of the hill. So it'll give me an opportunity to kind of uh, start walking stuff back anyway. Alright, so I got my other beetle blaster here. You can see the design's a little different. It does not appear this separates, so I just have to pour this olive oil between the grates and try not to make a big mess. Oh, I am making a mess. There is a bee trying to get to my ear. Distractions. Okay. This is enough. And then you just put it clean.
All right, let's uh, finish putting back together. So at this point, we now have four small Hyatt Beetle traps in here. We have one at the bottom. We have one jewel case, that's a DIY beetle trap. And then we have these two mechanical submersion traps where they fall in and die. We'll see which one works best. I'm gonna have to check them back soon. Now that I have a problem, this is something I have to go back and check on the regular. Leaving these out kind of made them all fuck off, which is nice. They, those stupid, stupid worms. Alright, so we're going to put this back in like this. That's where the opening to the five top feeder goes. I don't want to block the vents either. Hive does need to breathe. Even if it's just all fermented honey, still gonna produce uh, fumes. All right, Mr. Bumblebee, you need to leave. Trying to kill any beetles I see before I put it together. And I'm also making sure my screens here that I put in have not been um, crawled under. Because that's a, a good way for them to get in, right? They look fine. I don't really see like insect dermis stuck to them. I'm going to give these bees the benefit of the doubt and uh, see if they'll recover. I'm going to refill their water and uh, sugar water, I mean. And um, just for the next few visits, I'm just going to have to keep spraying this whole area down with that salt and vinegar mix. And hopefully. Um, they'll just be let, their, the cycle may continue for a little while, but there will, should be substantially less and less of them if this method works. And you know, being a newbie here, not trying anything really, although well, it's my first try, we'll just have to see. So I'm going to go ahead and pack up now. I'll be back down a little later to feed my bees. But for a moment, I'm just going to wrap up. So, um, if I'm going to mention some interesting discoveries today, I would say noticing the beetle barn at the bottom being completely empty. Uh, I don't know when to check these things, and like, you know, going to the bottom of the hive really can disturb them. So, I've had these hives for a few months now, like what, almost four months? And uh, I don't really try to open them that much, or maybe this is the price you pay. Maybe I should feel comfortable breaking the, the, the wax seal a little more often and checking the, the bait. And um, maybe probably seeing those, those larvae a lot earlier. Because right now they're like peripherated through the comb. And uh, I, I think if I would have opened them up more often, I probably would have noticed them. And maybe I could have started treatment a little earlier. But, what can you do? 
that's why it's really good to have two hives. You know, you, as much as we're going boohoo about this hive, that hive, this hive is doing freaking great. This hive is just covered. I can't even see in the darn thing right now. So, uh, it's okay. Even though one's suffering, maybe we can do another split back in there later. So, my next step is to kind of uh, wait and uh, see if the larva dies off. I don't think they will. The problem is probably just going to come back. If, since the hive I consider it pretty much dead now, there's very little activity in it. I'm probably going to go get myself some big uh, coolers. Like, you know, you take the, like, uh, to, like a, a camping or like a, a tailgater where you put a bunch of beers in it, like a cooler. And uh, fill that up with bleach and uh, water and um, soak the trays. And the reason, well, I'm just, there's a lot of bees over there. I don't even know why. Huh. What did I dump over there? Where are those yellow jackets? Sorry, that really distracted me. There's just like a hundred bees just all kind of laying on the ground walking around. I don't know what they're doing. I forgot what I poured over there. I don't think I poured anything over there. Like all the larvae right down here, if they, if that was warm. And uh, hopefully the larvae that I dumped off are just going to die now. Because it's they're, they're immature and all that. Oh, sorry, so I didn't finish what I was saying. So you take the trays, the, all the frames, and uh, you soak them in this bath probably for an hour or two. And um, at that point, you can pull them out and kind of take a look at them. Um, I don't even know, like, if they're soaked in bleach, I don't know how you're supposed to, like, put them back in the hive ever again. Worst comes to worst, I'll just have to cut off all the hive and kind of start mm -hmm. fresh. But, uh... If this hive, you know, swarms out, that's fine. I might just buy new trays and then clean those in my leisure. Because they look really messy right now. But at least if we, um, if we put the, the bleach solution, it'll instantly kill them and they won't spread anymore. So, we'll see. Anyway, take care, y'all.